Hi everyone, this lesson is on weird signs and symptoms of a tapeworm infection. Before we get into those weird signs and symptoms, let's talk about tapeworms and how they infect humans. So tapeworms are also known as flatworms. Now there are many different species of tapeworms that can infect humans, and they can infect humans by several methods of transmission. One of them is going to be through consumption of undercooked or uncooked meat or fish. So some of these types of tapeworms that can lead to infection by this mechanism include Tania species and Diphylobothrium latum. Another way that tapeworms can be transmitted is through human-to-human -human contact, and one species that can do this is known as Hymenolepis nana. And then the third way that tapeworms can cause infection or be transmitted to humans is through contact with pet fleas. And the species of tapeworm that can come from pets and be transmitted through pet fleas is the species known as Dipylidium caninum. Now, when a person gets infected with a tapeworm, there are several important common signs and symptoms that can occur in those infected individuals. One of them is going to be passage of proglottids. Proglottids are the segments of the tapeworm themselves. So passage of proglottids is going to be seen in the stool of the patient. Another common finding is going to be anal pruritus. Pruritus is itching sensation, so an anal itching sensation can be also another finding in patients who have a tapeworm infection. Another one is going to be abdominal pain. And another one is going to be nausea. And abdominal pain and nausea can occur, especially early on in the morning, and can be relieved with small amounts of eating, especially in infections with tania species. So these are going to be the common signs and symptoms in a variety of tapeworm infections. But the topic of this lesson is the strange or weird signs or symptoms that can occur in tapeworm infections. So we're going to talk about those as we go through this lesson. So the first weird symptom we're going to talk about is actually a deficiency, and that is going to be a vitamin B12 deficiency. And a vitamin B12 deficiency can occur in patients with tapeworm infections from the Diphylobothrium latum species of tapeworm. So Diphylobothrium latum is a tapeworm found in uncooked or undercooked fish. So patients can get infected with this tapeworm by eating contaminated sushi, sashimi, or fish tartar. So uncooked or undercooked fish that is contaminated with Diphylobothrum latum cysts can be a source of infection here. Now vitamin B12 deficiency is actually going to be a relatively common finding in patients who are infected with Diphylobothrum latum. It can occur in up to 40% of cases. So this is not going to be a very rare finding in patients. So the weird signs or symptoms that can occur from this are going to be signs and symptoms of a vitamin B12 deficiency. So one of them is going to be depression, and it's going to be a reversible depression. So if a patient becomes deficient in vitamin B12, they can have a low mood. They can be depressed. And this is going to be a reversible depression. So when the patient is supplemented with vitamin B12 or the tapeworm has been treated, they can actually have this reversed. So this depression can go away simply by replacing vitamin B12. Along with the depression, irritability can also occur as well. So an irritable mood can occur. Another very important finding in a vitamin B12 deficiency is going to be decreased cognition. So decreased cognition can involve impaired memory, impaired understanding, and impaired judgment. And in some cases, a vitamin B12 deficiency can look like dementia in older patients. So this decreased cognition along with impaired memory, understanding, and judgment can be something that can be found in a vitamin B12 deficiency and can be ultimately due to a Diphylobothrium latum infection. Another important neurological finding that we can see with a vitamin B12 deficiency is symmetric paresthesias. So paresthesias are going to be numbness and tingling sensations in certain parts of the body. We can often see it in the extremities, and it's going to be symmetric, meaning that it's going to be on both sides. It's going to occur bilaterally. So if it occurs on one leg, it's going to occur on the other leg as well. Or if it's on one foot, it's going to occur on the other foot. So this can be something that can be noted in patients with a vitamin B12 deficiency as well. Vitamin B12 deficiency can also cause a shuffling gait. So a shuffling gait is going to be where the patient has a wide gait and they make very small steps. They're often going to be stooped over and they're going to have flexed knees. This type of gait can also be seen in Parkinson's disease as well. Another finding in vitamin B12 deficiency can be decreased two-point discrimination. So two-point discrimination is the patient's ability to discriminate between two points. So their ability to discriminate two points depends on what part of the body is tested, but in vitamin B12 deficiency, 
they begin to lose their sensitivity to discriminating between two points. So in a patient with no vitamin B12 deficiency, they may be able to distinguish two points that are separated from each other, but in vitamin B12 deficiency, that same patient may only distinguish it being one point. So that is something that may happen in a vitamin B12 deficiency. Another possible finding is decreased proprioception. So proprioception is the patient's sensation of their body in space. If they have decreased proprioception, may not be able to balance properly, may not be able to coordinate their body properly. So they may have issues with coordinating bodily movements, for instance. So this could also happen in a vitamin B12 deficiency. And another finding is a macrocytic anemia. So macrocytic anemia, meaning that the red blood cells are larger in size. And some of the signs and symptoms of a macrocytic anemia include fatigue, shortness of breath, exercise intolerance, pallor, and arrhythmia. So all of these findings can occur in a vitamin B12 deficiency. So this can be something that can be found in patients who are infected with a difilobothrium latum tapeworm. The next category of weird signs and symptoms that can occur in a tapeworm infection are skin findings. So skin findings can include an itch or erythematous rash on the skin. So they can have a rash that can look like this and it can be very itchy. This rash can occur on any location on the body and it's more likely to occur in tapeworm infections with Hymenolepis nana. This is the tapeworm that can be transmitted from human to human or in Dipyladium caninum infections and this is the tapeworm that can be transmitted from pets through a pet flea. So both of these types of tapeworms can lead to an itchy erythematous skin rash. And along with the itchy erythematous rash, an infection with Hymenolepis nana can also cause nasal pruritus as well. So the patient's nose can become itchy in some cases. Some other skin findings can include subcutaneous nodules or skin nodules. So the nodules can look something like this in some patients. This can look like raised bumps on the skin and it can occur in various places. It may be pruritic in some cases, so it can be itchy. And it's caused by an infection with taneous solium tapeworm. And this is the pork tapeworm. So it can come from ingestion of the juvenile stage of this particular tapeworm. And it's actually a specific form of infection from taneous solium known as cystocercosis. So cystocercosis is going to occur when patients ingest or consume the juvenile stage of taneous solium. And what's going to happen is that tapeworm is going to release out of the gastrointestinal tract, enter into the systemic circulation, and the tapeworm itself is going to form cysts in different parts of the body. And one of these parts of the body can include the skin, and this is actually going to be tapeworm cystocerci we see. So it's actually cystocerci of taneous solium being deposited in the skin. Now, some other weird possible findings in certain tapeworm infections include obstruction. So obstruction of certain bodily systems or certain ducts in the gastrointestinal tract more specifically. So again, this obstruction is going to be caused by cystocercosis again. And this obstruction is going to occur due to large numbers of cystocerci blocking the openings or the lumen of parts of the gastrointestinal tract. So these cystocerci can enter or end up in different places in the gastrointestinal system. One of them could be the appendix, so it could lead to a blockage of the appendix and actually cause appendicitis, so an inflamed appendix. So that's one possible finding with cystocercosis. Another one could be blockage of the cystic duct. So the cystic duct is the duct that leads out of the gallbladder. So a blockage of the cystic duct could lead to cholecystitis, and cholecystitis is an inflamed gallbladder. And if the cystocerci end up blocking the pancreatic duct, this can lead to pancreatitis, and pancreatitis is an inflammation of the pancreas. So these blockages can all be rare complications of cystocercosis. And some of the more specific signs and symptoms with each of these include the following. So in appendicitis, there can be initial periembolical pain, so pain around the belly button, that can migrate toward the right lower quadrant. The right lower quadrant is going to be in the location of the appendix. There can also be nausea and vomiting here as well. In cholecystitis, in an inflamed gallbladder, there can be right upper quadrant pain. So right upper quadrant being the right upper side of the patient's abdomen. And there may be fever as well. And the pain may radiate to the right shoulder blade or scapula. So this can be a classic hallmark finding in cholecystitis. And the clinical finding known as Murphy sign can be positive as well. So this is where the clinician actually pushes on the patient's right upper quadrant in the location of the gallbladder and they get the patient to breathe in and if they are not able to continue breathing in, if they stop due to pain that would be a positive murphy sign and then nausea and vomiting can also occur in cholecystitis as well 
and in pancreatitis, abdominal pain, mostly localized in the epigastric area, can occur. So this is going to be, again, a hallmark finding of pancreatitis. And this epigastric pain can often start out as an ache and increase in severity until it is a constant pain. And the pain radiates to the back. This is, again, another key finding in pancreatitis. And there may be improvement with leaning forward. This is known as ingle finger sign. And patients with pancreatitis can also have nausea, vomiting, and fever as well. And the last weird sign or symptom we may see in certain tapeworm infections is epilepsy or seizures. So this is going to be caused by neurocysticercosis. So this is where there are cysticerci that have entered or been deposited into the central nervous system. So the central nervous system is going to be the brain and the spinal cord. So you can see in this image here, these are cysticerci in the brain. This is actually going to be one of the most common causes of acquired seizures worldwide. So it's going to be a very important finding in some parts of the world. And some other clinical findings in neurocysticercosis include dizziness, headaches, and an increased risk of stroke as well. So these were some weird findings of a tapeworm infection. If you want more information on tapeworm infections, please check out my lessons on those topics. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.